I thought I'd give you a little Olympics update because, you know, the, one of the great things about the Olympics, um, now let me just... Um, the Mark Thompson Show. One of the great things about sport and the Olympics is it brings people from all over the world, from disparate backgrounds, together. They put away the tribalism that informs so much of their life that they have a different God than you do, or they have a different ritual or series of traditions in their world than do you. That's all thrown away. Everybody comes together for the purity of competition in sport. Until you have to shake hands with an Israeli athlete. Is that all right, everybody? Yeah, yeah. There's nothing, there's no hate like hate that you can concoct right there on the medal stand. A judo competitor at the Paris Olympics refused to shake his Israeli competitor's hand after the match, as is customary. Judo Nurali Emomali of Tajikistan refused to shake hands with his Israeli opponent, Tohar Butbur, following their match in the round of 16 on Sunday. Emomali, who won the match, chose to walk off the mat without the customary post-match gesture. Before he left the mat, ex-users pointed out that he had said Allahu Akbar while holding up a prayer symbol known as the Finger of Ta'id, which refers to the Islamic belief that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his prophet. Shortly after he competed against Japanese Olympian Hifumi Abe, which ended in a brutal fashion, at the end of the match, Abe slammed Emumali to the ground Amumali reached his left arm toward the ground, but the force of the fall and the weight of Abe caused his arm to bend and dislocate. Many are saying it's instant karma for Amumali having not shaken hands with the Israeli athlete, as is the common gesture traditionally. Amumali, meantime, had to be carried out by Olympic staff members because of the severity of his injury. Social media users called it instant karma for bad sportsmanship, for refusing to shake hands with his opponent in the prior match. And so hate and ugliness raised their ugly head in the Tajikistan Olympians' history there in Paris. Meantime, SNL alum Rob Schneider is boycotting the games. What? Not as a competitor, but as a viewer. Rob was a San Francisco kid, knew him, hung out with him in San Francisco many a night, many a day. Lovely guy, but he's had enough. He was angry about the opening ceremony at the Paris Games. I don't know how many of you saw that, but the opening ceremony was Morning. filled with all sorts of hugely creative, synchronized, vast uh, displays of one sort or another. In fact, I thought it was amazing. Just the scale of the thing was incredible. And so I was really quite taken with the opening Olympic Games. But there were some controversial parts of it. And... I thought the controversial part was the threesome thing. Remember, did you see that? There was a, there was literally a story where two people meet in a library and then a third person's part of them and they end up back in some room and it was two guys and a girl. I thought, holy, this is on the opening ceremony of the Olympic. It was wild. And, but I'll say this on the other side of it also or just to, to speak to the virtuosity of it all, it's pouring rain, and they made those opening ceremonies come off with tremendous skill and, I thought, a magical flair for the creative. But, again, there was controversy, and Saturday Night Live alum Rob Schneider, you see him there, is boycotting. He says, I'm so sorry to say to all the world's greatest athletes, I wish you all the best, but I cannot watch an Olympics that disrespects Christianity and openly celebrates Satan. So they had a, apparently a tableau that evoked 
The Last Supper, the Leonardo DiCaprio. There it is. Uh, uh, Tony's showing it to you now. So they had that in the opening ceremony. And Thanks, Tony. Apparently, also, the scene featured DJ and producer Barbara Butch, who's an LB, uh, LGBTQ plus icon, and then their drag artists and dancers all along the table. And apparently one backup dancer appeared, according to reports, to have his genitals exposed during the ceremony. What? Yeah. Um, it, it was wrong, it was stupid, and I'm trying to be a better person. Okay, so... Guys with their genitals hanging out in front of children, Schneider wrote in another post. Drag queens? I wasn't sure if I was watching the Olympics or if I was watching a school board meeting. Now, come on. That's funny. That's funny. I, I mean, I get it. It's right-wing comedy. It's anti-woke comedy, but it is funny. Um, but he's had enough. Now, I didn't see it, but uh, I don't know how offended one should be. It's... Um, uh, here's Heather on it because she seems like she, it's the feast of Dionysus. Good Lord. Is everything a slight against the dumb church? She asks. Yeah. It was not the last supper says Murphy. It was the ceremony of Dionysus. Dionysus says William Martin. Why does everybody here know it's Dionysus? But comedian Rob Schneider does not. Could it be <laughs> Satan, right? See Dana Carvey. Um, a menage a trois, how French, exactly. It was a very French thing. There it is, that the, there it is, the Dionysus Supper. Um, anyway, Greek gods, Olympics, hello, Murphy says. Yeah, come on, Rob. Wrong supper, Rob. Didn't know Jesus was purple and wore a crown of grape leaves. This is the Olympics. Olympics are Greek origin. Yes, wow. Everybody knows it. Everybody shows it. But you have to wait until you get here to this show for it to be pointed out, apparently. In other Olympics news, I know. Look, anybody can tell you the medal count and, you know, that Ledecky did well. That's not what we do. I try to give you the controversy and some of the other stuff going on there. There should have been a graphic written Dionysus, says the shadow producer Calvin Wong. That's why Calvin should be producing something, because he would know. You want to, you know, super that. Celine and Laser Eiffel Tower show only good thing, says Julie. That was, I thought there was more than just that that was good. I was pretty blown away by the whole thing. But I, I, again, I didn't see every bit of it. And some bits of it I saw like four times because they ran it over and over and over again. Goldman Sachs. Ah, Goldman Sachs. The CEO has told everyone on his staff they are banned from attending the Olympic Games. Meantime, he's on a private jet to attend the Olympic Games. All right. David Solomon under fire for jetting to Paris after effectively banning his employees from attending the Olympic Games. Again, if they want to attend on the company dime, you know, that you can go to the Olympics, but we're not going to pay, is his point. The uh, Wall Street tycoon chartered the bank's private luxury jet earlier this week to attend a series of parties and events ahead of the 2024 Games. So uh, he is there even though his staff could not be there. They are also concerned about one last thing, and this is related to competition. The water at the games, because of the rain, may be contaminated. Too contaminated, potentially, for there to be certain co competitions underway. The heavy rain in Paris over the last couple days is likely to impact the quality of the water in the Seine over the next 24 to 36 hours, according to organizers. They are very confident, that's a quote, that the swimming portion of the triathlon is going to take place on the River Seine, but they are not sure about timing. They may have to postpone certain things. Of course, a marathon is run, cycle, swim, right? Not in that order, I don't think, but that is the, you need all three. And if you can't swim because the contaminations levels are too high, that will be a problem. So um, the other thing that I thought was interesting, because it was the first day of competition, the 
first medal of the games went to China, beating out America in anybody. Does anybody know what the first competition, first meddling competition was, the first one that actually had a medal associated with it? It's going to surprise you that America was not the gold medalist. It was shooting. Yeah, shooting with a gun. That was the first, and China beat out America. I mean, had it been mass shooting, we probably could have easily taken the gold medal, but it was just shooting. So China beat us, and America took the silver. But there it is. There's that rig that you need. And, uh, yeah. So that was the first medal of the game. Congratulations to all the athletes. I love watching the Olympics, try to catch it here and there. But uh, I also think some of the controversies that are erupting are fascinating. And I'll tell you one last controversy. Apparently, the accommodations really are crappy. And I saw, and maybe, Tony, you can find this. Sorry, I didn't warn you. Although I think I may have sent a TikTok, but I don't know. I think I didn't send it because uh, it was too short. But Coco Golf and the women's tennis uh, folk, they had, I think it was, 11 competitors in uh, with two bathrooms. They all had to share two bathrooms in with 11 competitors in these two rooms. It's pretty grim. So all the competitors left except for Coco Golf, who remained behind. But that's the, uh, they posted a couple of TikTok uh, videos on that. And um, there is, the last bit of controversy comes from Kim, who has just added this. She says that an Olympics commentator has been dropped over sexist comments about the women's swim team. Uh, Bob Ballard was dropped from the European pay TV company Eurosport after the veteran sportscaster made sexist comments about the Australian women's team. Following the conclusion of Saturday's 4 by 100 meter freestyle relay, during which Team Australia won the gold medal, Ballard commented on the team's apparent delay in exiting the Paris Aquatic Center as they celebrated. He said, quote, well, the women just finishing off, you know, what women are like, hanging around, doing their makeup. Wow. How can you say that, dude? You are a, you're a broadcaster of sports, too, of women's sports. Um, outrageous, Bob, said his uh, partner. Some of the men are doing that as well. Uh, and, uh, that was his partner, Lizzie Simmons, who made that kind of try to soften the whole thing. And then finally the word came out today. We can confirm that Bob Ballard has been removed from our commentary roster with immediate effect. I mean, he's reported on sports since the sixties. He's a famous guy. So that's quite, uh, quite extraordinary. Thank you for that. Kim, uh, Kim working, even though, oh, the, did you find it? Wow, go for it. Well, the women just finishing off. You know what women are like, hanging around, you know, doing the makeup. Outrageous, Bob. <laughs> Some of the men are doing that as well. But doing the makeup. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I give him a warning, man. A warning and let him apologize, don't you think? I mean, I, I really believe that... It was wrong, sometime, it was stupid, and I'm trying to be a better person. Yeah, we're a little bit too tough. I, I, My bad. I'm sorry. But then again, I'm not a woman. Maybe that is offensive, you know? I mean, I think that um, uh, it's easy for me to say. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, I also feel, this is the last thing I'll say about this, that there's definitely a subcurrent of misogynism and I, it may not even be such a subcurrent at times. I don't know that that was it, but given that general predisposition and undercurrent, as I say, maybe we shouldn't be as tolerant. People, people should be aware. You know, it's not everything, you know, I get that woke is just this thing, but sometimes you do need to be a little woke about the stuff that, you know, that you say. And um, that's how it starts. You start with, beginning to be a little more aware. And then before you know it, you, you change your views. I mean, it's anyway. Um, yeah, he's, they just won gold medals. He's talking about their makeup and not their accomplishments. Yeah. I mean, again, that's 
you know, I, they were a while, taking a while to get out of the water after they won the gold medal. So it's not like the first thing he said, but uh, I, I understand. And I just I, I have just said it as well that I, I agree with you. Um, sometimes you got to be woke. Exactly. I, I, I really mean that. I, I know that this woke thing has become this radioactive, awful thing. But I think sometimes woke is a good thing, man. You got to be aware of stuff. What you say matters and how you refer to people matters. But I do think he was, and here you go, thank you, Julie has it. I think he was joking around. I think he was being sarcastic. He was, he was playing toward a stereotype. So again, I think, you know, while you have to watch what you say, you also can't be, you know, uh, there's a hair trigger on canceling people, you know. Um, Snoop Dogg was on NBC last night and did a wrap-up segment. It was really good. I know we've reported uh, with some eagerness and detail the fact that Snoop is a big deal on NBC and uh, this is his second time doing it so Snoop is on everything and about everything so it's uh it's quite Im impressive so uh if you're watching the Olympics and you want to drop me a line please do it I mean if you have something to say something we should pay attention to something we should follow up on I'm more than happy to do it there's Snoop he's holding that thing that looks like a blunt which is actually a the Olympic torch and no one would ever comment on the fact that it looks like a blunt before until it was being held by Snoop. And then you go, oh, wait a minute. It kind of looks like a blunt. <laughs> okay, am I right? What? <laughs> Congratulations, Snoop. 